Hello there, welcome back to another week of shows. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, Asian Movie Monday or World Cinema Monday, but I'm going to start Asia at the moment. Um, so, uh, it's a one film thing this week because I've got quite a few other videos with multiple films been covered, so I thought I'd just cover one for the Asian films and not try and stack them all up. But this one's so good that it's worth just having a video with it rather than have trying to put more videos on anyway. So it's one of those situations where I'm quite happy to just cover I'm Flash, which is a film from, now I'm going to butcher the name, Toshika Toyoda. Even though I've covered quite a few of his films, I, I still feel a bit nervous of his uh, first name because I'm not great at pronunciations. <laughs> right. Um, and we also... Have quite a few uh, lead, act well, lead actors are basically Tetsuya Fujiwara and R Rui Matsuda. So I mean, there's two like really good actors in the centre of the film as well. So um, that's also that helps a lot. So the film is about a cult leader, a religious leader, who has some problems. I mean, he he's played by T Tetsuya Fujiwara. Who you you recognise from Bat Royale? He was he's in a bunch of films. He's one of those actors. He's, he's been working a lot for a long time, for like twenty odd years. He's always in stuff. He's been good stuff, bad stuff, but he's always working. And he he works with these pretty good directors a lot of the time. I'm not sure if he's worked with Toyota beyond this one film, but I could be wrong because I haven't watched some of the other Toyota films. But he seems to be um, he's well cast in this one. He's an actor who. When he was younger in Battle Royale films, I thought he was a bit soft. But as I've seen in other films, as he got older, I've really liked him in him. So I think it's one of those things, he's an actor who's improved a lot with age. You know, but also the, the character he was playing in Battle Royale was intensely a bit soft and over-emotional. He, he yells a lot less nowadays, <laughs> which really helps. It also helps he's, uh, he's up against uh, Rui Matsuda. Who's also has always been a really good actor for Toyota. I mean, um, if you've seen Blue Spring and you know uh, Nine Souls, he's in both of them. He's an excellent actor. He was Nightmare Detective for Sukimoto. He's one of those actors who's whenever you see him, he's he tends to be really good because he underplays stuff, but he doesn't underplay it to nothing. He underplays it very carefully. He's a very good actor at understanding. Um, that a lot of things really count, and he is excellent in this film. He is really good. I mean, um, even though it's not meant to be his film, he kind of steals it from me at least. I mean, there's um, he is such a strong actor. I mean, I'm doing the thing that I usually do is no spoilers to start with. Uh, we're going to spoilers. I'll, 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 I'll tell you when we do it. So, the premise is this cult leader, this religious leader has got into an accident uh, in a car. He was drunk driving. So he's been shamed and been, he has to go to, he, he back to a family ret retreat for a while while he recovers from what happened and while they pay off the policemen and all the lawyers and stuff so that everything's done so he doesn't get charged with anything. That's the idea. Is he's just going to stay there on, on this island until he figures it out. Until he recovers... And they figure what to do with him. And can it, can anything be done to save him? Because he's the linchpin of this cult. There's also been generational. The family's been at it for generations. And he's the last of a high number of people who have done this. So, um, And it's a, a cult that has very sinister undertones. The way a lot of religions are offering you, like... Uh, eternal bliss and then the more you find out about the leaders and their problems it's like uh, there's something really dodgy here it's that kind of thing but say in japan because japan like america tends to have these weird cults like um it feels like a society japan like america has this need for something beyond the physical beyond what's already there for them there's, there seems to be a religious need or a spiritual need in the country that Hucksters can exploit. So there's that thing. It's something that goes through a lot of Japanese films, actually. I mean, uh, 
See, on Sono has quite a bit of that kind of feel to his films. The sense of um, Huxtable always trying to get away people's souls. And it's here as well, the sense of kind of corruption. But, but the interesting thing with this one is, it's, it's you know, seen the corruption from the point of view of the person they're corrupting, as well as people who are observing them. And in this one, there's no innocent party. There's nobody who's really, you can see, oh, well, that person um, isn't liable. I mean, the bodyguards, there's three bodyguards who come to protect him during this time. And uh, Matsuda's the main one. But you've also got Shigeru Nananko and Kento Nagayama as the other, you know, uh, bodyguards. And they're just they're, they're hanging around with all the time to watch them, seeing he's okay. No no one comes to them. They're wondering why they're there really. They're there for to protect him, but they're just kind of um just there, just watching him exist and not talking to him much and there's kind of unspoken tension between them and it's just something that will develop as we get into spoilers. But this is the element of the film is like it's it's a quiet film. It's not a film with lots of long speeches and lots of long moments of like um, explaining what you're about. It's very simple explanations at certain times in the film that are there for a point, but most of the time it's film about people just being. And the, I think that's the reason why with such an expl such a potentially explosive subject matter, this film has not been exported to the West like, at all. It's like, um, I saw it in the third, new third window, uh, Toyota Volume 2, or Toyota the later years, or whatever you're going to call it. And I'd never seen it before. It was very hard to hold of. You know, it was just one of those films that was very difficult to hold of. And then you see it's like, God, this is a masterpiece. <laughs> this is so good. But it's so uncommercial. It's like, what would you... It's kind of the equivalent of releasing a Terrence Malick film if no one had ever had a Terrence Malick. It's like, where's the market for this? You know, it's just like so beyond trying to be commercial and trying to be a big hit. It's like, this is a story we're going to tell and it's going to make some people uncomfortable, but it doesn't matter. It's still something important to the people making it. And it's just wonderful. It's a wonderful film. It's, it's really well acted, but underplayed by everybody. There's, there's a real sinister undertone to all the conversations, but it's not overstated. It, everything's complicated. Everyone's emotions are complicated. No one's got a simplistic view of life. Everyone's got their own view of life. There's voiceovers that explain the point of view of the lead bodyguard, but also ties into the point of view of um, Rui, which who is the person who they're protecting. And it's the different philosophies of life, whether you're... Embracing the um, those perfect solutions to your problems, even though we know that's, you know, salesmanship, hucksterism. And there's other point of view, which is um, done by the bodyguard, is like, life is difficult and it has very little meaning and you have to struggle on all the time and it's it becomes a thing of difficulties. Life, life is full of difficulties. And even that, those two philosophies are fighting against each other. But they're not done it, they don't do it in this film in a really kind of cliched ways. So, to end this section, because I already feel sort of don't moon into spoiler section already, um, this is a wonderful film, this is a masterpiece. This is just full on great. It says, sort of like Sugimoto's, a lot of Sugimoto's later films, it's full on masterpiece that should have been mass releases and it wasn't, it's been ignored and it's amazing, it's wonderful. So go see it. But don't get to spoilers. So stop here and go see the film, and then come back. Because really do not listen to spoilers if you haven't seen the film. You really need to see the film. I mean this is the ultimate do not look at the spoilers. <laughs> um the funny thing is when I say that when I went into any spoiler section, it is obviously a short story plot. There's, n there's no big revelations in this film at all. What it does actually have is two, two plot points that are flowing through. The first one is the um, 
bodyguards have also pertained to assassins if the, the religious guru does not carry terror to his mother and his family. Because his family are in and all this. His sisters are person of a lot of power. She's a marketing person for the, the religion. And she's really upset with him. So is his mother. They view what he's done as a horrible mistake. And if he's a spoiled brat and he's been indulged for too long. On the other side, you see how much this hucksterism has actually destroyed his soul. His mentality. He has become as a drunken womanizer who just has to be babysat by everybody. He's an image and he doesn't feel the image like at all. He just feels like he's a charlatan. And he, it's like, what's wise life worth living? I mean, basically his only real joy is to go um, scuba diving and hunt some fish. That's his joy in life. That's all he, he can do. And every so often go and before the accident, go and romance these other women and even though he has no respect for them. It's like his life is a living hell and he can't really fight against his family because he's been brought up in this thing. And there's all these skulls in this place where he's always at of the people who came before. It's like they have the skulls of the, of the different gurus from before and quite a few of them have bullet holes in them. Which tells you that a lot of people who have gone through this, there's been lots of deaths which have been a bit suspect because at a certain point lying about reality becomes a poison in your soul and he's reached this point. He's reached a point where this is a poison, this is something that uh, makes life hell, makes life a living hell and it's like um, you're sinning against everybody repeatedly, you're just not... Life is just not really worth living. But at the same time, he doesn't want to die. <laughs> and having these three hitmen there, or the bodyguards, who also can turn on him at any point, and he knows it. I mean, he really knows it. I mean, he's, he's like, um, he doesn't quite trust them because he knows what they're there for. If he doesn't carry terror to his, to his family, to his mother especially, who's like the, you know, the, the person really in charge he knows he's done for. And because he's a, he's a publicity problem as well, they can just say it's a suicide or something or an accident or something like that. It's, it's, it's one of those things that can be manipulated to make him look like a martyr quite easily. So he's like, he's in a bad spot. But at the same time, he keeps on standing up to himself, himself against his sister first and his mother. And at that point, they know that there's no way back. He is not going to uh, go back to the ways of, you know, just been a lying, cheating side that he'd been before that. So just look at how corrupt people can make religious belief, how corrupt they can make any kind of belief, any kind of need for spirituality just to make money. That's all it's about. It's all about money. It's all about um, exploiting people's needs for trying to find meaning in the world. And you get that the three hitmen as well, they've, they've got their own different versions of belief. Like the younger one doesn't have anything, any real depth to him for what their beliefs are. He's just, um, uh, he's just learning. He's not really, he's, um, he has a kind of point of view of someone who's like a puppy. He's willing to read up our stuff and think, think it's deep. Like, he is taken in by the spirituality of the person to protect him for a bit, even though everyone else knows it's just bollocks, basically. You've got the uh, central hitman, played by the nightmare detective himself, who is the most distant. He sits apart from everyone else, and he's emotionally distant, and he's, um... And his philosophy and the philosophy of the guru are... Um, at odds because he has a much more fatalistic philosophy and uh, a cynical view but he's not soulless he just this is his job this is what he does this is what his life is but he just views things as what they are not try to project things try to project meaning onto the world the world is just physicality and you're dead you're dead and that's it He's a very practical view of things, but it's not 
nasty. It's just like that's the way the world is. Then there's the older family man who also has a practical view of things, but he's a family to feed and he wants them, you know, yeah, he has to kill this guy, but he's a family to feed. He's practical. He just he's, his life's compromised, and that's that. And he just accepts it. So you have these different views of life through the different bodyguard hitmen. And they're kind of the working class people who, uh, they don't have any choice in the matter. They're going to do what they do with the people who have the money. And the people with the money of all, like, uh, you have one who, you have the brother who's becoming a sister who's trans, who obviously cannot be used as a spokesperson for the religion. So it's this person's kind of in these shadows all the time, but is wandering around trying to give the brother advice to try and help a little bit, even though he's, he's had tough love. There's a sister who's just into this whole thing that's a money making scheme and she's willing to use her own son. She's got a son and she wants to have him as the next guru to keep it going so she's pretty soulless. And the grandmother, or the mother of both of them are, is, is, who's pretty much the same as her daughter basically. This is a money making scheme, this is it. She will be brutal, she will kill her own children to keep it going. So you've got this kind of... Um, the, 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 the higher classes are very, very brutal, and the lower classes know their place. And they just find a way to get through the world, and they see it's a brutal place, and they just have to get on fit. And you have this guy who's, who's bucking against what he was, but for his own salvation, but it doesn't really mean anything, ultimately. No one cares. I mean, his bodyguards don't care. His uh, family doesn't care. The only person who cared was a woman who got into the accident with him, and she would try to kill him because her sister was uh, was a suicide because of his religion. And he, she's the only one he bonded with. And she's a coma. And it's, it's like, um, there's no meaning to the world. Just at the end, basically, when he dies, she comes back with a coma again. Now, it's like, that's the one grace note. Because the rest of it is just basically the... Uh, the young kid, the naive, the, the naive um, hitman dies because the guru fights back and there's a, there's a gun t- fight at the end which is not a drone we're taking this as a clumsy, the cl- that's the stuff, any advance in this film is clumsy and human level. The only person who has any real skill is the lead hitman who, who basically has common sense but he's been in face before you can tell. And he knows to keep calm, to not just go shoot, shoot, shoot. He is calm about what he does. And that's how he wins. He just thinks about what his, what his opponent's going to do. And he wears them out. And he is very, very focused. But he also knows he's in danger at every point. Which makes it a much more human fight at the end. Because it's um, it's not someone, even, even though this person's actually pretty smart, he knows he can get killed. So he has to be extra careful. And that kind of human element always comes through this film. Is like, yeah, there are all these people with a point of view, but they're all very human. Good or bad, they're all like, they're all human in that limited way that we all just have our points of view and we can't get beyond ourselves. And it's it's a, it's just a tragedy of um, people who weren't strong enough when they were younger to stand up like the religious guru. And the people who are stuck in this world of basically been hit men. Because that's the only th- option I've got. The probably ex-military or something or most of them probably are or came from the streets and know how to use guns. It's that kind of thing of uh, what happens if you're in a compromised world and how spirituality isn't going to save you, isn't going to help you. It's just a need that some people have and some people don't. So spirituality is kept as this thing that's like most things about like religion generally. Religion can be helpful or hopeful. It can be exploited for power. And this whole film's about that, but done at a very kind of micro level, so you can see how these things get bigger and more absurd and more over the top, the more powerful and the higher the rise in power. But it starts with very basic needs, you know, and this film has has at the lower level where you can see the basic needs coming out of these people, which is the kind of aspiring stuff versus the reality of money or not money. This is an amazing film, it's wonderful. I'm probably not doing justice. But it is something you really need to see. It is just a stunner. And I'm really happy to see Third Window has actually released it. Because it is just so, so good. And uh, I'm looking forward to the Artie Ojo's on set. 
I'm going to go through them over the next few weeks. I'll hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully you enjoy the next few videos as well. So that's me for now. I'll be back later.